Let's get to the phone lines and speak to the Honorable Sam George, MP for uh, Ningo Pram Pram, who is one of the proponents of the anti-LGBT bill, and uh, to see what he has to say about this. Hello, good evening, sir. Welcome to Eyewitness News. Truth spoke in the U.S. says that uh, Ghana may become, you know, less welcoming if uh, the anti-LGBT bill is passed into law, and that may have trade and investment consequences with the United States. What do you say to that? Hi, good evening, good evening, and 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 uh, good evening to your listeners. We've had uh, we've had uh, the U.S. ambassador, but the points she's made, uh, her opinion, those opinions don't represent the facts and they don't represent the truth. So um, we can only tell and reassure her that ultimately Ghana remains a safe destination, a very safe destination for businesses that are interested in business. Because the bottom line for businesses is profit. It's not about LGBTQ or, or or the cultural values of the host country. And so, except the American ambassador is trying to say that all American investors into Ghana are LGBTQ persons. In that case, we're not interested in their investment. But let's always be clear about one thing. Investors come into a country, they come into the country to make profit. Meaning they come into Ghana here to make profit. You can't be coming into our country to make profit. There's no U.S. investor in Ghana who, who is um, here as a charity. They're all here to make profit. So if you're here to make profit, you must abide by our laws. Simple and short. I see. So, so the U.S. investors cho will choose to invest their money where, where they wish. And if they find our country discriminatory in, in terms of how we deal with people, LGBT people, now we, we are preparing to pass a bill or a law that will prescribe their, their, acti their activities in very explicit terms, uh, what this means is that it cuts off uh, members of those communities or that community who, who may be willing to invest in Ghana. And, and your repost or your, your response is that we do not want LGBT invest, uh, inve investment from LGBT people in Ghana? Well, the U.S. government does not accept investment from people who hold extreme religious views today. So it means that even the U.S. government does not accept all kinds of investments. In Ghana today, we don't accept investments from persons who hold extreme religious opinions. So it, it is not to say that there is a cut blanche for all kinds of investment. Investment must sit with the laws of a country. I know Ghanaians who invest in the U.S. I know Ghanaians who sell their produce, share butter, cocoa products in the U.S. I know a few of them who are polygamous. I've not had the Ghanaian ambassador to the U.S demanding that America changes its laws on polygamy because Ghanaian businesses are doing investments in America. You see, there is no difference between... The, the, the script hasn't changed for 400 years. The same way the forebears of the current ambassador came on the shores of Ghana in, in slave merchant ships and came with bottles of gin and, and mirrors and got us to sell our own to them for a few bottles of gin. It's the same thing they're doing. How can American businesses who are coming here to make profits and repatriate to their country have the country and the audacity to tell us to change our culture and our cultural values and beliefs for them to come and make a profit in our country? I mean, tell them, does it even sound right to you? If it is not that we as a country have cheated ourselves and have failed to have a value system, do you think Americans would dare that with our Nigerian brothers? Nigeria passed a same-sex marriage, a bill banning same-sex marriage, as far back as 2015, eight years ago. Did you hear the Americans dare threaten Nigeria? Because they knew Nigeria would respond in like manner. It's high time Ghanaians begin to realize that the way we sell ourselves is the way we're going to be bought. And that this is a sovereign nation. In fact, anybody who goes into business, goes into business or partnerships, the first state test of any potential business partner is a sense of integrity and his value system. So if you claim, and we claim as Ghanaian people, that our culture frowns on this, but because of a few thousand or million dollars worth of investment, that is not even proven will not come because we pass a law. We change our value system. Ghana will be seen as a country that doesn't have integrity. 
and only two businessmen will not stick his neck to work here with us. People came to this U.S. Ghana Business Summit fully aware that Ghana is about to pass this law. They came because they know Ghana is a safe, profitable investment destination. That's why they, that's why they will come here. So let's not buy into the rhetoric and let's stop regurgitating that rhetoric. That if 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 we pass the deal, something would happen to us. Adam is not working with Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia to catch you for what's the trend. They're gonna kill you. They hung your body from a train in a town square. But Americans still are able to go and work there and invest there. But but, but the economic so, muzzle of the of the of the two countries are not the same. You talked about even Nigeria. I mean we 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 stand on different levels as far as the, the our economic programs are concerned. Every Ghana country, Ghana goes country to, to, to countries like the US point. to beg for arms, to beg for, for, for resources. And so once you go but to them to beg, they, they're able to tell you what they want. Is that not the case? No, no, but who told you that Nigeria doesn't also go for loans from the US and Nigeria doesn't also go to beg for arms? It's about how you package yourself. It's about the self-awareness. You understand me? And that's the point I'm making. That if we are self-aware, we will not go into a position, into, into negotiations with them in a position of servitude and begging. We will go to a partnership. If our president and our leaders will walk to the top, where they said we don't want aid, we want partnership, then we will begin to talk to them as partners. Right now, the attitude of the West is one of condescension because of the attitude our leaders go into those negotiations and those conversations with. Every country has its own strengths and selling points. It is, it's not every country's selling point as the size of the economy. Ghana has safety. We are the most buoyant democracy in the sub-Saharan, in sub-Saharan Africa. Ask yourself why the agencies like the World Bank choose to build their head office, regional head offices here, and why we have many UN head offices here in Ghana. Why are many American businesses operating out of Ghana and, and, and working in the sub-region by headquartering themselves in Ghana? We have peace, we have democracy, we have stability. Every country has a, a selling point. That's what you play at. You don't go, you don't chip in yourself. When you chip in yourself, you'll be sold with a bot that way. And that's where we must come to. Come to the table with our strength and say, this is what we bring to the table. You either respect us or we walk away. Nkrumah gave us the roadmap to this. He said, we look neither to the east or the west. We look forward. We must have a national identity and a national goal. He said, this is what we want. If the West is willing to play ball with us, they're welcome to the table. If the East is willing to play ball with us, they're welcome to the table. If they are not, we should show that we, are, we should cut our clothes according to our size, cut down the profligate expenditure, and cut out the corruption and waste in our system, and we are good to go. I see. Thanks so much, uh, Honorable Sam George.